Found this throwback video in my hard drive that I never posted from Chicago around St. Patrick's Day. It's a cool time to be in the Windy City, both literally and figuratively, because they dye the river green. It's something you definitely want to check out. After spending some time on the river walk, our DJ and Tingles kick back in and we head over to play some poker. Charity poker is the name of the game in Chicago, with a few operators hosting games and a portion of the rate going to charity. The location for this game is at a local Marriott hotel, but hopefully we'll be showing our nuts on the felt instead of in a suite. We sit down at the 1-2 table waiting for our seat at the 2-5, we're in for 300. First hand of note, we look down at American Airlines from the big blind. The button raises to 8 and the small blind now 3 bets him the $25 and the action's on us. We're going to be coming in for a 4 bet here to $77. We're going to be out of position so it's important to size up here. The button gets out of the way and the small blind puts in the 5 bet jam to $150. Obviously a snap call for us here and we're going off to a run out. Flop comes deuce, nine, eight. The turn comes the five of diamonds, then the river comes the deuce of hearts. He shows pocket queens and we show pocket aces. Nice to scoop a $308 pot right out of the gate. Our name gets called right after that for the 2-5 game. We're out of the 1-2 for $450, so $150 profit in that game. We add on for additional $300, so we're into the 2-5 for $750. First hand at 2-5, we look down at ace-queen offsuit from the cutoff. I raise it up to $15, and it folds around to the small blind who puts in the 3-bet to $55. Strong hand like ace-queen offsuit here. We're going to be finding a call here. We put in the 55, and we're off to a flop. Flop's a good one for us. It comes ace of spades, nine of hearts jack of diamonds we flop top pair with a good kicker small blind continues the aggression for fifty dollars i think we have an easy call here so i throw in two green chips and we're off to a turn turn now comes the six of clubs which shouldn't change too much of the action if he had us be with ace king or ace jack so be it the opponent now doesn't slow down he puts in a chunky bet for hundred and thirty dollars and like i said if we're behind ace king or ace jack so be it we have to call here on the turn it's too weak to fold here our top pair with a queen kicker I put in 130 and we're off to a river. The river comes at 10 of diamonds and the opponent now starts with a check. I doubt that the opponent has us beat here. If he had ace king, he'd probably fire another barrel here on the river. Likewise, if he somehow ended up with king queen here and made the nut Broadway straight, I think he'd fire again here instead of going for a check raise. So with that information, I think my ace queen is good here. I bet $115 into the $465 pot. Opponent flicks his cards into the muck and we're going to scoop that hand with a pair of aces. Next hand of note, we look down at pocket fives from the under the gun position. I start with a limp for $5. There's another limp or two and it comes around to the big blind who raises to $15. I put in the additional $10 and the middle position player does as well. So we're going three ways to the flop with 47 in the pot. Flop comes eight, seven deuce with two clubs. And now the big blind starts with a check. Being out of position here with third pair, I'll check as well here with our pocket fives and the middle position player checks behind. Turn comes the three of spades, which doesn't change too much now, but don't tell the big blind that he now fires for $20. His story doesn't really make too much sense. He raised preflop over a few limps, so he's likely to have some painted cards in his hand, something like ace, king, queen, jack, or 10. I don't think his check on the flop was a trap. I think he's smelling weakness here and deciding to go for a bet for $20. I don't really like a call with our pocket fives as well because we don't really have too many cards on the river that will help us other than the two remaining fives. So for that reason, I decided to go for a raise here, hoping to get through the middle position player the big blind decides to call us here on the turn, I'm definitely going to be firing the river looking to put pressure on his ace high type of hands, but that's not the case when the middle position player folds and the big blind folds as well. So we're going to scoop down that pot with our nice little three bet there on the turn. We then see something kind of cute and kind of comical when an opponent decides to play with his dog at the table. Hey floor, one player to a hand please. 1050 in our stack, we look down at 10 8 of clubs from the button. The small blind and the big blind put in the call, so we're going three ways to the flop here. Flop comes jack, jack, deuce, rainbow, and the action checks to me. I start for a pretty standard $15 bet here, and the small blind gets out of the way. The big blind doesn't fold, he also doesn't call, he now raises us to $100. I really wish I had a pocket pair type of hand here where I could call him down and see what he had. It's unlikely that he has a jack in this situation, because although I would play a jack as a check raise, I wouldn't check raise to $100. 
probably somewhere in the neighborhood of 50 or 60. But either way, with 10 high here and not too many backdoor draws, I just make an easy fold and we're going off to the next hand. A funny situation develops when a player raises to $475 over a $125 C bet and the player asks if he has a set, and so he shows a nine with a nine on the board. What do you guys think of that there? If you're the person who's raising big over a C bet, and the player asks you what you have, would you ever show a card to the opponent? Is the opponent showing a nine here strength or weakness? Like, does he ever, like, obviously he could have a set here, but does he ever have, like, a bluff? Like, is he showing ace nine, maybe, like, for just a pair? Let me know down in the comments, is this strength or weakness the majority of the time? Next hand, we look down at ace-queen offsuit from middle position. I raise to $15. The cutoff calls and the small blind does as well, so going three ways to the flop here, which comes jack, six, four, rainbow. Small blind checks to me, and I decide out of position to another player. I'm going to start with a check here with my ace-queen high, and the cutoff checks behind. Turns a gin card for us, it comes the queen of diamonds giving us top pair, top kicker. To make it better, small blind decides that's a good card for him as well and bets $15. I decide to put in the call here and the cutoff gets out of the way, so we're heads up to the river with the small blind. The river comes the seven of spades, which doesn't change too much, although five eight and five three now make a straight. Small blind bets $50 into the pot of $50, and even though a pot size bet probably means strength, I think we underplayed our ace queen up into this point, so I think a raise is in order. I make it $135 and the small blind pretty quickly calls. We show our ace queen to the table and he shows queen seven. So it looks like our smooth call on the turn ends up backfiring on us and he gets there on the river with his two pair and he's going to scoop that pot. Pocket nines from the cutoff is the next hand. The under the gun raises to $25 and it folds around to me. I make a standard three bet here to $75 and only the under the gun position player calls going heads up to the flop in position. Flop's a good one for our range, it comes ace, six, three, two spades and the under the gun starts with a check. I decide to make a one third pot size range bet here for $45 and the under the gun position player makes a quick fold so we're going to scoop that pot. It's interesting to note that while he was tanking, deciding what to do on the flop after I bet $45, he said, oh, so we both have an ace, but then he ultimately decided to fold. If he folded an ace here, that's definitely a bad play. He needs to be calling at least one or two bets here. Definitely happy to be taking down that pot with our pair of nines. Last hand of the night, we looked down at ace-king Osu from under the gun. I raise it up to $15. The button and the big blind both put in the call, so we're going three ways to the flop here, which comes queen, jack, six, all hearts. Big blind checks. I decide to check here out of position to the button, and the button checks it behind, so we're going off to the turn, still three ways. Turn now comes the king of spades, so we make top pair, top kicker. The big blind leads out for $25, and I think we have a pretty easy call here. A raise doesn't make too much sense, so I just flick in one green chip, and the button gets out of the way. We're going heads up to the river. The river comes to two of spades now, and the big blind checks. I decide to bet $35 here. I think our hand is good enough to get some value from a one pair type of hand. The big blind calls our $35 bet, so we think we're good here. We show our ace king to the opponent, and he flips over the exact same hand, just a couple different suits. Ace king offsuit. We're going to chop that last hand of the night. When it's all said and done, we rack up our chips and head to the cage. All right, you guys, so we got out of the game for 906, so a profit of $306 here at the Chicago poker game that we played at today. Uh, some of the proceeds went to charity, so that's definitely pretty cool. If you guys like this video, be sure to hit the like button, comment down below, subscribe if you're new, and I may be playing again in Chicago, but if not, uh, if you guys are in the Chicago area, definitely leave a comment down below because next time I'm out here, I'm gonna wanna see some of you guys at the tables. It's a lot more fun when I know people. Uh, thanks as always for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace. Thanks for watching to the end of my video. Click my head below to subscribe and stay in the loop. See you next time.